If only just be You are now in the realm of enlightenment and transformation as brought to you by the Foundational Friday. Our core aim is to present an experience, an opportunity for your soul to reascend to its place of origin by cultivating a healthier spiritual awareness and emotional maturity. This show serves as a free offering to the greater community and an addendum requirement for all a new spiritual training students. For all those listening, if you'd like to move closer to the calculations and fundamental understandings of the new order, be sure to pick up the book, Grasping the Root of Divine Power. If you desire a spiritual reading to help you map your current spiritual position in the face of your world and learn the greatest pathways for your fortune, In this season, you can go to the seduluhouse.com. That is S-A-D-U-L-U-H-O-U-S-E dot com. You can also go to orishareligion.com to find out how you can become a student and member of the New Spiritual Order. That's O-R-I-S-H-A. R E L I G I O N dot com. Let us begin. Yourself is God. Anything that's dealing with color, like when we're dealing with um, heart chakra, uh, womb chakra, navel chakra, it's colors. Anything dealing with a color is human condition. Okay? Now, in order to help us get through our own human condition, as we can see with Chris's elekes, right? We were given these these tools, these implements, by the name of Orisha. Yeah, don't hide the vibe. You want to take them out? Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> um, now, as you see, because that's the perfect learning aid, um, he has a lot of different Orisha who are represented on it. Okay? And um, through his elect gates or his sacred beads, what they do is they guide him through his human reality. Okay? Because they're different colors, like we have the yellow and green, uh, we have the red and white, and all of these different colors affect our human existence. Beyond color is you as a divinity. So the white is you as a divinity. The black is you as a divinity. Everything in between, his elekes are protection, his elect on your human body, getting his rent paid, uh, promotions at work, so forth and so on, climbing up what we call Jacob's Ladder. Those elekes are his stair steps. They are the colors. When you get to the top of the ladder, like if anybody ever saw the movie Adjustment Bureau, you guys seen the movie? The Anthony Mackie, sorry, good movie. And Matt Damon. Um, in that movie, he gets to the top and it's like, he, it's just, it's like a weird maze that's going in a circle. Um, he moved beyond the chakras, even beyond what we call a reshut. Okay? The Orisha are, are not permanent entities. They're spirit thought forms that exist in a plane. Your Ori, or your soul, or your consciousness, or as we call in Kemet, your Ka, um, or, in, uh, or in a kind of Kra, that soul is, is infinite, okay? It exists in a place that is older and more vast than the astral plane. The Orisha exist on astral planes. The reason that we know is because the Orishas have heavens and hells. Some of the prayers that you'll say sometimes to Orisha will be, um, open up your gates of heaven to me. Like you may be saying, Shango, I stand here, who is the, the deity or the archetype, which is the better way to say it, but the archetype of introspection. Now, one of the challenges that you're gonna have with Orisha is that most of the time when you learn about them, they teach you them like they're superheroes. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is cartoonish. Yeah. Shango comes with the lightning. Boom. Oshun has the mirror. And what am I going to use that for? Like, I'm going to call somebody who's just self-absorbed? It doesn't really make sense. Yeah, they're anthropomorphized, but to the point... The only reason they were anthropomorphized because we became so stupid. That's it. From the moment we got on the planet, we, we started this slow decline of stupidity because we existed here before in a non-physical form. 
Ori. And then Ori amassed itself through the condensation of matter. We have a particular Odu for this called ED. There's an Orisha that's even over this called Yemonja. Some people call it Yemonja. She deals with, and if anybody here uh, does Iping, this deals with the hexagram Kin, or Gin, which is the mountain. Okay, that associates itself with the condensation of matter. Okay? Once we became material beings, that was a part of our fermenting and rotting. Okay, so that was our fall. The Lucifer, that's you. You, 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 me, Lucifer. That's the light being who fell down into darkness. What is, how do you, how do you trap a God? There's only one way to do it. Anybody know? Hmm? By removing his divinity? You can't. It's impossible. Putting it in a body. The only way you can trap a God is by putting it into a human corpse. That's it. But what happens when the human corpse is ripped open? It's released. The God is free. But now the God has more information than what it did before it fell. It's enlightened. It has, it was transformed through the human body, but now it's going back to enlightenment. Exactly. Okay, that is the yin and yang, light dark process of enlightenment and transformation. Lucifer sat back and said, you know what? God, you're great, but I can be better. He said 11 times, I will. Now keep in mind that angels, which the original name was Angel, it wasn't Angel, that was changed. So an angle was an angle of God. So really Lucifer was God saying, I'm bored. <laughs> Perfection is death. Yeah. Perfection is boredom. Even this metal isn't perfect. Why? Because it's going to oxidize and rust. It's going to change. Okay. So God says, you know what? I'm bored out of my freaking mind. I've mastered everything and I'm completely stretched out to the best of what I can be. How do I become better? If you're the greatest, let's say you're the greatest guy, you're the greatest artist in the world. And there's nothing that you cannot conjure through your gift and ability of artistic expression. How do you become a better artist? You take away your art supplies. Nah. Yeah, MTA. Say it again. Take away your art supplies. Take away his art supplies. Cut his hand off. Yeah. Blindfold him. So what did we have to do? We had to negate him. We had to make him less than what he is to make him better than what he is. Got it? You are the negation of God. Or in this tradition, we say Olu Dumare. Olu Dumare, old means owner, or whenever we have O, like Ogun, Oshun, Oya, uh, Oba, Olokun, it means the owner, the O. Odu, I already told you, means womb. Mare means serpent. So Olu Dumare is the owner of the serpent's womb. Okay? Now, when we're dealing with serpents, guess what we're dealing with? Anybody know? Energy, but more Let's, specifically? Uh, Wait, no. Um, it's creatus, yeah. Kundalini, the Caduceus staff, DNA, the DNA healers. Okay? So now Olu Dumari represents the evolution that comes from the womb of the universe. Olu Dumari is just your next step. Now, is Olu Dumari here right now? Wait. Well, yes, yeah, present to our shade. But what else? Did I just teach anybody anything? That means Olo Dumari was just created. Because you just evolved your understanding. Olo Dumare is, in, in the comedic system, we had, we had Atum Mare, where we get the word Atum, or in the Bible, Adam, okay? Now, Atum Mare, remember, what does Mare mean? Serpent. Atum is the beginning, the atomic beginning. So Atum Mare, or Olo Dumare, is the first step, the beginning. Guy is dead. This is a new guy. Because he just learned something he didn't know five minutes ago. So he just became Olu Dumare. It's the next step in evolution. Because remember DNA, they found out recently that um, DNA actually does evolve. It's not static code like they said all these years. So it evolves through unconditional love and acceptance. And they found that when they exposed it to fear, the molecules would stiffen. It's pretty deep if you think about it. So if you're afraid, your DNA locks down your evolutionary code. When, and, and fear is what? Attachment to ego. Saying, I'm alone in this. So as soon as you do that, the DNA says, okay, you'll be alone, but you're also not gonna evolve. As soon as you open up and say, you know, Arisha are not scared. They're not devils. You evolve. So 
We have our Arisha in that sense, correct? Um, yeah, because I have no pictures of myself, so this is how I do it. <laughs> I don't like taking pictures. So this is how I get them. Um, so, and you know, my la my most recent pictures are from last year's New York Pagan Parade. <laughs> That's the, la the most recent picture, a year ago. I hate pictures. Um, What's your name? Peru. Peru? Yes. Okay, so now, the Orisha, again, help us through our life as humans. But they are consciousness. Ori means, means uh, soul, right? Or consciousness. Sa means to be selected or seated. So Arisa is the consciousness you select. Chris has several elegates around his neck. I guarantee you if a, if a madman came in here wailing at Chris right now, he would select a certain energy to respond with. He's not gonna, he's not gonna respond, peace, peace, all right? He's not gonna respond with crown chakra energy. Because what is the crown chakra energy? Enlightenment. Enlightenment and meditation. But meanwhile, I'm over here trying to, someone's trying to kick him in the chest, right? So he's gonna reach down to his Eshu. Eshu lives in the root chakra. And Eshu deals with the physical environment, his physical protection and safety. So you're selecting various consciousness based on the situation that you're in. What is consciousness? Okay, cool answer. Um, that is one level of consciousness. Um, the more exacting level of consciousness is that which observes and controls this process. Many times people say, okay, when we meditate and we come into enlightenment or consciousness, we're able to control our thoughts. But they think that the thought itself or the controlling of the thought itself is your consciousness. No, your consciousness is that which sits outside the thought and says, you know what? I'm gonna make the thought cool and be whatever I want. Like right in this moment, if you could totally control your thoughts, you'd probably disappear. <laughs> Literally, you probably would be vibrating so fast we wouldn't even see you. It'd be like the Celestine prophecy, like that one. Okay? Um, so most people who say like, oh, I'm, I'm meditating, I'm no, you're not. You just like relax, really. You know what I'm saying? That's why most people fall asleep when they meditate. But to actually control thought, to control thought form, is something else. Orishas are thought form. They are parts of your body, your organs and your brain. Before we, we dealt with left and right brain reality, we dealt with animal aspects of the brain. One of the animal aspects that's prevalent now in society is the reptilian, which was said to be located near the back of the brain, right? So now that understanding has been misunderstood and people are now saying there's a reptilian race, okay? Now, no, I know, I don't even have to ask you, none of you have seen a reptilian. Maybe on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? With a little Final Cut Pro, we can all be reptilians or, or Photoshop. But what that meant was people took it literally, they didn't understand that the reptilian people are the people who deal with Kundalini energy. That's Olu Dumare. The people who are able to touch that fire of Kundalini are the reptilians. Okay? Now, what are some of the images that we originally had of the devil? Horns, what else? Tails. There we go. Hooves. Hooves, right? The goat. Now, the tail, what was that on that tail? Anybody remember? It's like the arrow. Right, you both got it. You both got it. Good. Now, if you notice, whenever you saw the image of that arrow, it was pointed down. There's a reason that it had the spiky arrow. It could have just been a smooth tail. Because that tail actually represents a snake. So that's what the devil is when you fall into the bottom of your kundalini and the head of the serpent is pointed down. When you arise back to your divinity and greatness, it points up. So whenever the devil, or I don't even want to say the devil, because really we're talking about Satan. Satan, devil, Lucifer, three different people. And the serpent, they're not the same person. When he arrives and he redeems himself back to the light, just like Darth Vader did, because all that was the story, the Anunnaki, Anakin, Skywalker. It's, just, it's, it's a story about, about a fallen angel who gets redeemed back up, and he's more perfected than what he was when he start out, started out. Okay, um, so what we're dealing with when we're talking about Orisha, we're talking about thought forms that are controlled 
the few and power not only by our shade, but by our soul, which is our ori. Okay? They are given different vehicles to travel. The people here, I'm sure everyone's familiar with vampires, right? Okay, cool. What do vampires need to get work done? Energy that they get from where? Other people. Right. Now, how do they tap into it? What are some of the various ways? Cut them, bite them, sit next to them on the bus, marry them. That's real. Some of you, you think it's because you hot he wants you. He wants you because he wants that energy. And then when he's done and, you're, and he's completely drained you, now all of a sudden he doesn't want you. And you can't figure out why. Because he's going on to the next meal. That's why he usually goes to somebody younger than you. You ever sat next to someone on the bus and missed your stop because you fell asleep because now all of a sudden you're exhausted? But you wasn't exhausted. Or sat next to someone get to you. Sat next to someone that was so negative that when you sat next to me, you had to take your coat off because you felt hot. I've had that happen a lot. Maybe I just attract horrible people. But, you know, sometimes you, that's a witch. A witch will stare at you certain types of Let me not say that. That's really the wrong term. Um, can stare at you and take energy. Next thing you, you're yawning, you're hungry, you're horny. <laughs> it's because they're extracting our shape, energy. Yes. They can't, they can't take energy. Yes, they can. They, but I don't believe that. Okay. We, like I think it's more, it's more. Um, not that you give your energy away. Like you, you. There's no way someone that can. You're, you're giving your energy. They're not. They're not just taking it. If I leave my front door open and something gets stolen, did I give it to the person? Yeah. Or did I, or did I leave a door open? It's the same thing. If I open the door and give you an apple pie, as opposed to opening the door and you see the apple pie on my counter and you take it, what's the difference? Okay. okay. One is theft, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, how do they take your energy? You leave a door open. Right. Okay. What is the door that's left open? Religious dogma. That's a door. That's an easy door to get in. People come to me and say, oh, so and so much minute. Why don't you tell me, oh, they're there. Religious fanatic, easy. Boom, we got this. I don't even need it. Just give me some water. <laughs> <laughs> um, stress is one of the, the biggest doors to get in. Someone who's stressed out or fearful, you can always take their energy very easily. Oh, that's how you take energy. Now, can you stop someone from taking energy? Absolutely, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I can I can make a clear choice, even in this moment, as I'm speaking and I'm giving Ashe and I surround this place with my incense, I'm making it clear to any phantasm that may be around that this is not a place for you to come feed. That's why the incense is burning, okay? So we do certain things in our auric body and our spiritual body to create protection for ourselves, okay? So that way, Entities know the door is not open for you. Even when you have sex, there are things you should do to say, well, as soon as I orgasm, this is not for everybody to feed off of. Because there are entities waiting. Vampires. They need Ashe to materialize in the physical world, which we call Aye. Okay? Just like the movies. Back in the days, you had these movies. Vampire gets killed, gets thrown in the grave. And then like there's a grave digger out there, he's sweating or he cuts himself over the grave and he walks away and then at the end you see a hand come through. Ta -da! And then the thing will go down. Because he, he was given a vehicle of travel. Blood, ashe, words, energy, sperm, urine, saliva are vehicles of travel. Okay? And what they do is they allow people to manifest in this world. Yeah. So what would you say then is the difference between ashe and Emmy? Beautiful. Um, Emmy expresses itself as Ashe. Emmy is the root. Emmy is divine breath that flows through everything. But Emmy is what we call the causeless cause. Okay, are you familiar with Kabbalah? A little bit. Okay, cool. So you know, above Kether, you have Ein, sure. which is zero. Yeah. That's really where the Kabbalah chart starts, at zero. You have Ein, Ein soft, and Ein soft, soft her. Soft her. Very important. I said that, sulfur. Because at the root of your soul is sulfur. Sulfur. Just like when you burn a match and it's left over the sulfur. That's at the root of your soul. That's the top. But anyway. So, 
it expresses itself. Ashe is an expression of expansion. Ashe glows hot. So Ashe is to get things done. It moves forward. So if you could picture like a man and a woman, women are receptive. They're wounds. They're soft. They're receptive. They bring things in. They're not looking to get things done until something is put in that, that stimulates the process. Whereas a man is express, expansive. He's light. He's trying to go to find something. Ashe is an outward expression of definition. Like this, this is this leaf has been de defined as something. We now see as a green leaf. Maybe. I don't know. Might be something else, but I said it's green and you all agreed, so now it's green. We just made the contract. It might be something different. Um, but underneath it was something that didn't care to be anything. Until so something fell from a tree, a seed, light, sperm, dropped down and said, I want you to be this. And here we have grass. So Emmy is causeless cause. It's just, it's just there for no reason. Would you say it's kind of like the different potential? Yes. Exactly. Emmy is potential energy, and Ashe is kinetic energy. It's once it gets into motion, okay? But you need both of them because Emmy is a boundless pool of energy. Ashe runs out. You can't exhaust something of its Ashe and then it dies. Okay. It mean never dies because what happens when the body dies, when that ashe form is, is gone, the soul goes somewhere else because the soul is in me. It cannot be destroyed. It's just like a building. I saw people should never say my life. I effed up my life. You have no life. No, it's like a building. Like you can't mess up the air in a building. Destroy the building, what happens? The air just goes somewhere else. So life is, is not us, ours to mess up. It's just inside of us for a minute, and then it goes somewhere else. But it's not ours to destroy, you see? So Emmy cannot be destroyed. Our shape can be transmuted. So this goes back to what you were saying. What is the job of the Babalao, like myself, or a priest, or the Awo? We're able to extract the Ashe from something and transmutate it into something else. So you can give us a bottle of rum, or you can give us water. <laughs> like that one. <laughs> um, or crystals, or anything, or elekes, which before whoever the Awo is, which means priest that gave him that, those elekes, they were just glass beads. He transmutated, or she, transmutated the energy of those glass beads into something that was now a force. Because in Yoruba, there is no word for thing. I've been trying to find it forever, it doesn't exist. The, the closest word they have to thing is ohun, O-H-U-N. And ohun means force. Nothing is a thing in Yoruba, everything is a force. So if you understood the world as everything being a force, then you would understand that everything can be used for something because it's a force. Even the string and the beads. Because what do the beads represent? They represent the, the, the practice or the, the, the origins in good. the body. But even before, that's good, you got it. But before they represented that, they represented the yoni. We all know what the yoni is, right? Vagina. Okay, so you have the beads or the vagina, and then what do you do? You string them with the lingam. Creation. Now he has entities around his neck. He has forces around his neck. Okay, so that is what the Orisha are. The Orisha are forces that got navigated through our human world, and their intention and their hope is that we take them to the next level. Okay, because they are temporary forces. And they express themselves through many different traditions. So is Gabriel, or Isis, or Osiris, or Raphael, or Mikael, or Morgana, any less Orisha than Shango Oshun Oya? No, because they come from the same source. Love says, I'll express myself as Oshun, but I'm also gonna express myself as Shola, and Venus, and Aphrodite, and as Pampa Gira, and as Beyonce. <laughs> I have multiple expressions of how I want to present myself, and I'm gonna give my children's clues. So you're gonna see Beyonce in gold, Goldfinger. She's gonna tell you, 
this I'm Oshun. You see, because I can express myself. Tina Turner is going to say, I'm going to keep the last name Turner. I'm not going to take on Bullock. Even though we know the bull is sacred to Oya. But I want to be Turner, like the tornado. And I'm going to represent that jilted woman, that battered, bruised woman, that Oya represents. So you'll know who I am. That's your mother. Okay, I had a feeling. <laughs> so um, they come, these avatars come in various forms. Oh yeah, comes as Kali. You see? Um, Kuan Yin, Tara. All these different forms are Oya figures. And Ogun comes as 50 cents. He comes as Suge Knight. I'm gonna wear all my red. Okay? Mike Tyson. These are Ogun, Khalid Mohammeds. Um, Colin Powell. Oshun is even uh, Hillary Clinton. Perfect Oshun representation. I know. Perfect. <laughs> See, that's when we make them cartoon characters, when it's like they have to be one way. They express in ways that we couldn't imagine sometimes. And that's part of our job here, is to figure out the multiple expressions. That's why myself as a Baba Lao, I'm not sitting here telling you all the bow like you're supposed to do when you meet me. Um, I didn't, you asked me what my name is, Haru. I didn't say call me Baba, which is my title. Because that's the old school Baba Lao. The new school Baba Lao, me, no. I like meat mills and, 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 and you know, cheese doodles. Like, <laughs> you know, so because Ifa is, is, and Orumila is, is where I come from, Orumila evolves its expression. Okay, so when I say, yeah, I like shooting guns and I like having a lot of bunch of beautiful women around me and da da da, now you understand, oh, that's what Ifa is today, huh? That's what Olu Dumare, the atomic beginning, has evolved to. He's evolved beyond the identity or the, um, you don't even see Alekes around my neck, okay? He's evolved beyond needing a certain identity. Now, is that wrong? No, that's another expression. That's an expression, that's an expression, that's an expression, that's an expression. And the unique expression is the color. That's why he has so many colors around him. All of those colors make up the various strings of consciousness. And we can tap into each and every one of them. Questions? Are we on time? We got time. Okay. Wait, ready to go to one? Yeah, I think so. It's almost one then. Okay. Ten minutes, okay, cool. Well, I can. Yes. Okay. Good, and then we'll get back. Yeah, somebody can do that without even knowing. That's an awesome question. Because you have people who are just miserable. And what they do is they create these vortex. And the vortex just sucks everything into it. Okay, um, so yeah, people are like, but some people are just whining. Some children are annoying. And it's just high maintenance. So yeah, there are people who can do that without realizing it. So it's, it's not um, always that someone is intentionally going out to harm you. Nine times out of ten, that's not what it is. It's someone just being, not having enough ashe of their own. Because they're not doing deep breathing. They're not doing qigong. They're not listening to music in the dark. They're not doing orikis and praise songs. They're not dancing. They're not doing anything. So they meet you and they say, I just love the way I feel when I'm around you. I just want to be around you all the time. It's just, I don't know, I feel like a better man. And you have a, you feel flattered and like, no, you're a damn vampire. Get away from me. Get your own power. And then we can meet up later. <laughs> yes. You know. Um, so yeah, I would stick, I like myself. <laughs> and I like John Mason. Um, and don't always stick to Yoruba stuff. Go to the Congolese system. If you really want to learn Yoruba, study Congo. And there's some good Congo books out there. Okay, that's where it comes from. That's where the comedic systems come from. And that's also where Sangoma comes from. Wasn't like Africa at a certain point, like its history, considered all of Congo, like most of West Africa? Yeah, it was called Congo. The King Bongo at one Africa. point. Yeah. You know, uh, called Akibilan at one point. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, there were conferences. Con the Congolese system, as well as the Ugandan system, yeah. was the root. Because you gotta remember, the Nile starts in Uganda. That's the beginning of Nile Valley civilization. And that's where everyone would go to get the deep stuff. We study the Egyptian stuff because it's like exotic. And we 
get into it. And there's more translated literature there than anyone else. That's why we could, we put Kemetic or the Egyptian system was actually the Uganda and the Ethiopian, Ethiopian systems on their decline. So you're actually not, you're getting the worst of what it actually was. Even though, so as powerful as it is, imagine how much more powerful the Congo or the, or the Uganda is. So get, get the Congolese books. Okay. Okay, you want to get those. Um, and the lot, the let me lodge, just get here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you had a question? Oh, okay. Yes, go. No, no, go ahead. I don't have a question. No, 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 I was fine. So she's cool. I, was uh, I was gonna say, um, The Garden of Blood, um, Blood and Bones by Nicolaj. He speaks really well on Congo history and its practices. Excellent. I haven't read that, I'll get it. Nicolaj from Scarlet Imprint, The Garden of Blood and Bones, speaks really well on Congo history and its practices, especially like, um, Palomayombe, where it comes from, and how it evolved into the church, so yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, when you study all systems, whether it be Hermetics, Hebrew, Yoruba, Samgoma, um, the Ethiopian system, the Akan systems, it's the same thing. And it's not because one person, like each tradition will tell you, oh, Rumula traveled all around the world. <laughs> but no, what happened is that psychically we all connected. It's just like now, dancers will come out on the East Coast, and then you'll find on the West Coast they're doing the same exact dance, but they just call it something different because those dances are even divine representation. They all, everything has a spiritual meaning, but it'll just have a different name. You know, like some place you may call it tap dancing, another place you may call it hoofing, and in another place you may call it the raising of the earth's kundalini. So what do you think all the tapping was for? Sammy Davis Jr., those guys that came out, they were priests, they were part of a priesthood order. And they were here to bring up the kundalini of the earth. That's why we now have global warming because the serpent of the planet is eating them. Um, it's funny how you say you, you consider yourself more of, uh, not new age, but not associated with like old school babas. Um, what's your whole perspective of like old school babas, you know, stripping the feminine out of like, you know, out of all the body and all the lupa and just making it this whole masculine being? Because my research of like all the modern stuff and, you know, being with me, you know, they would just want it the whole Christian conception into the religion through the Caribbean and stuff like that. They strip the feminine out of everything and put the masculine above everything. So how do you approach that and how do you see that? You just answered the question. It's the Christian invasion and the, and the Islamic invasion that did that. Of course, because you, you got to remember you, your three chief deities in Christianity is God, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It was really Isis, Osiris, and Horus, or Osir, Osir, and, and Heru. So they killed Isis and made her a ghost. We just call her the Holy Ghost. You see, so when you're coming with that type of influence, um, and most of these Babalaos that you're speaking about are Christians and Imams. They're, they're already converted. And what they're teaching you is what their grandfathers taught them that they can remember. Most books you'll read, you'll see they'll, they'll say that. I'm a fifth generation Babalao, but I'm actually a, a, a genetic scientist. But I'm just gonna write down what I remember in this book. And we worship these books because we can't get our hands on anything else. It's like Guy was saying. But most of these books are written by people who don't even really fully practice the culture. You see, uh, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> you know, uh, so yeah, stripping the masculine is completely against your construct. Even your elekes, like I said, the string is the penis and the beads are the vagina. Everything in this system deals with the interaction between light and dark. It's the interaction of, of Shango and his three wives. It's the interaction of Ogun and his two wives. It's the interaction always of, the, of, of Eshu, who is androgynous. Obatala is androgynous. Okay, um, so that aspect and that, it's, it's not about putting the women back on the throne. Because some people come with that, yeah, the women need to rule. No. The men need to, no. It's got to be the balance. Okay, and that's where that gives rise to creation. When heaven and earth come together, man is formed, not mankind. Mankind is soulless. Mankind has no ori. That's why when um, Buzz Armstrong, when he landed, he said, one small step for man, one giant step for mankind. He was saying something for all the occultists out there. He was saying, I know I'm not a man. I am a part of a society, and there are many societies, where these are soulless people who are trying to transform and ascend to the state of soul, soul beings. 
These are the secret order societies that everybody likes to talk about. These are the people who have no ori and they know they have no ori. So when it says one small step for man, it's because man already traveled to the moon. This is not new for man. It's a giant step for mankind because the kind of man, the man that was created or what we called in Egypt, the Tamahu, this is big for us. He didn't even do it then because they freaking faked the, the, the land. Okay, so no, that um, is not a part of the culture. And it's really sad because in our community, Fa and Ocha, you know, that's really predominant. Yeah. But like my old Ba, who's, who's my top money in DC, mm -hmm. um, he emphasizes that when he goes by a mental scratching to right. the follow, he was like, I need the presence of the Yaya. That's right. I need her presence in when we're scratching because we need the feminine in the birthday. He does not, he's not like other follow lineages where he's like, oh, it's just men and no gays allowed and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I need the presence of the Yaya to give birth, not just me. Because right. I need the woman and the man present. 90%. Of occult spirituality, especially Yoruba and indigenous African spirituality. Right now, we're floating in space, and what are we floating in? Darkness. It's a gigantic vagina we're, we're, we're inside of right yeah, now. We're, we're an embryo ready to be burned. That's it. That's all we are. Everything comes from dark. Darkness cradles light. Without darkness, lightness, light has no place to hold itself. So even when you plant a seed, it goes into the dark. The darkness of the earth cradles that seed to give rise to something. The darkness of the earth cradles those who fall from heaven, called the Anunnaki, the Anakim, um, the Anu, Lucifer, um, mankind, who live in Aie, and they give rise to man. So us falling, Ori, Olodumare, wrapping itself, saying, okay, I'm gonna be this Ori, the soul. I've given it the breath of light, and wrapping itself gives rise to these personalities, these faces, this everything. I'll get to you then. Yeah. Okay, I have a question. Sure. You said that the Egyptian medicine is becoming Yes. Why is it that the Egyptian teaches that the Egyptian civilization started in Egypt, not Yeah, because they're not dealing with the fact that Egypt was actually a colony. So just like when they say Nile Valley civilization, well, they don't even say Nile Valley civilization. They just say Egypt. But when they're speaking about Egypt, Egypt, they're really only speaking about the southern tip, which they call the northern tip, but that's actually the south. But they're just talking about that one little area in the sand where there's a couple of pyramids. But all along that Nile Valley, where the Nile runs, there's a valley. There was civilizations and pyramids all up and down it. Now, the beginning of that valley, where the, the river actually started, was Uganda. So what happened was the people migrated up, and as they migrated, they formed colonies. And Egypt was one of the colonies. Now, Egypt was mostly also populated by the people known as um, the people of Punt, P-U-N-T. That's the region now that we know as Somalia, okay? And this is where you get like the best frankincense came from Punt, okay? Um, but Ethiopia, being a Greek word, F, which means God, and Ethiopia, like utopia, means like, you know, perfect place. Ethiopia was considered to be like paradise. And it's people who colonized and moved out, they landed in Egypt, or that northern tip. But, like I said, it's just that we have our most translated living for this. So even if you go to Ethiopia and try to find some deep stuff, they're just gonna take you to Catholicism. That's about as far back as you're gonna go. There's an angel there that some talk about called An Anwa, but you won't get much information. You go to Egypt, you get a lot of information because all of the buildings are still standing. You go along the Mississippi River, Mississippi, which is an Egyptian word, by the way, as well as Memphis. Um, you have, you have um, pyramids. The first pyramids that were ever found were found along the Mississippi. There were also pyramids that were found in Cleveland as well. Okay, so there are actually pyramids on this soil as well. This is where we go back to the understanding of the Stargate. The pyramids were not just these tombs and buildings like they tell you. They were actually airports. This is where we would teleport. So we would go into one vortex and one pyramid and we'd end up along the Mississippi River. Okay, then we, we'd end up in South America. We end up in, in Asia. You know, when you're dealing even with the, with the Chinese dynasties, these are all um, colonies of really Uganda. Uh, keep in mind that the first two Chinese dynasties, the first three Shang dynasties were actually ran over by black rulers. That's why they're called the Shang. Where do you think they got that word from? 
Anybody know? Anybody pick up on it? <laughs> Shango. That's where you got the Shang Dynasty. Cambodia. Where they just found this massive pyramid at. I think it was last year. Cam means black. That's why Egypt was not, it was Egyptos, which was the name. It was actually not the original name. It was Kemet, which means the land of the black faces. Cambodia meant the land of the black people. Okay? So these are people, these are places, that's why wherever you go you find African culture because we were constantly teleporting all over the darn place before we got really stupid. And now we can really walk. What do you think about um, the potential battle that's happening spiritually between people that are working on this and uh, propelling this and doing this? what has been happening for a long time of like trying to subdue it and I think that has a lot to do with again trying to overcome the black culture and the black community in general mm -hmm. is this like we need to and especially the Christianity and everything trying to like um, halt this spiritual evolution that was happening right here. it's the greatest thing in the world yeah. I love it it gives it a purpose right it gives it a purpose <laughs> and it weeds out the weaklings yeah when you're dealing with spirituality, we need more alphas. The beta stuff is, is not getting us anywhere. It's where we talk about the Bible house he's talking about. Who don't respect the women and the feminine aspect and stuff like that. Those gotta go. Yeah. That's gotta go. Let them die off. So all of this oppression that's coming is now cause forcing evolution. So right. it, it, it's that it's that everybody's playing their part. Kind of right, and it, yeah. the pressure is squeezing out the diamonds. So I, cool. Come yeah. on, let's go. Let's yeah. let's try this stuff out. I things that I've learned and I teach, I've tried out in real battle. Like yeah. when my life was on literally. I ain't just talking about a snake on the ground or something. I'm saying I was gonna be destroyed. Have you ever like considered or had any interest in like getting people together to do some kind of like massive ritual at all the different pyramids? Blah 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 blah. blah. Nah, because you got to look at the world like a giant nucleus, which it is. Um, 97% of a nucleus, if you understand even how an atom is shaped, is actually empty space. They call it dark matter. Uh, the greatest mass and density is at the center. So, mass movements, that went out with the 60s. It's not going to happen. Well, now, but it only takes... As far as like, getting lots of people, I just mean in general, like, doing something very intimate, but with, like, on all parts of the world. We're already doing it. Yeah, that's true. You see what I'm saying? Right now, I guarantee you. Yeah, somebody's doing what we're doing. I got. I would bet anything on it. Somebody, and if somebody looks like you, probably somebody looks like me. <laughs> and they going, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> whatever language they're right speaking on. in. I right. guarantee you. So again, the, the deity it takes, new. It takes a purpose. It, it's just uh, diluting the intention, really, when, when when you try to take it that far. And you broadcast it. Bad men move in silence. Don't tell the plan. Look at the night sky. Those stars are millions of, of miles apart from each other, but they look like they're, they're doing all doing the same thing. Get it? This is another woman's moving with a star on her forehead, showing that her third eye has been activated. Okay? And you guys are thousands of miles apart, but in the collective spiritual sense, they all see us as one big body. We're cool. We got this. That's why we're waking up. There was another. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, what, what, what would be your, your advice to eclectic practitioners who are not part of like the major community, or community like yourself, who want to have a desire to get close to Arisha? How would you tell them to, you know, just continue that if they just want to be remain kind of eclectic with this big, you know, issue about cultural appropriation nowadays, saying, oh, you can't do that because you don't have initiations? Right. Because the way I started was I was committing suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my yeah came into my life. And then I began Smack my upside your head. Yeah, she's like, going. I'm taking her. <laughs> right. So I began my devotion to her, but I, I researched everything that's appropriate to her. So what would be your advice if you want to continue your eclectic um, devotion to Marisha's? Join nothing. self initiation Joining is for suckers. Don't join anything. All right? Now, that's, that's my number one advice. Because what happens as soon as you join something, you're now restricted from doing something else. Like I have a school where I teach these things, right? But even within my school, you can't stay forever. Okay? Once you learn, like there's people I, I exit out. No, don't. I'm not going to be your apostle. Okay? Um, what happens is once you join, if, if, if God is a blood and I'm a crib, 
right? And I need something in order to take me to the next step, but it's against Crip regulations, I'm stuck now. I can't go to the next step. If he needs something that Crips do, that he can't do as a blood, and you see I'm taking it to the lowest dollar, yeah, yeah, I'm taking yeah. it to the gang. Yeah. Think any lower than that, yeah. you know, in a sense. So that is something deeper to that too. But the point is, once I join something, I now have rules. And the rules are always gonna block my ascension. That's why Most High came down here in the form of Eshu. Eshu is called the independent phenomenon. He does what he wants. I pivot at the crossroads, you don't know what I'm gonna do next. Um, in, in Hindi culture, we have Hanuman. And Hanuman is the avatar of Eshu. And Hanuman is represented by the head of a monkey. Barack Obama has the Hanuman tattoo. He knows about this thing. So, um, what that means is that form of the monkey is very energetic. Okay, the Indian monkey and the African monkey are different. Okay, one is like a little bit more laid back and just, and one is always bouncing all over the place. It's very unpredictable. That's why Hanuman has that head, because that represents the unpredictab unpredictability of Ashe. It manifests and forms in any form that it wants to. Because why? It didn't join anything. It don't join nothing. That's for suckers. Like, is it not to join anything? But like, even my, my own vows, my father, my father, you know, you have the same mindset. Um, my Ila is called the House of Misfits. Mm. And the reason why is because they said he's not, I know he where doesn't want to restrict yeah. nobody in their path. Right. He's like, go out there, go learn. learn Come learn back to me, I'll give you my interpretation. You'll have right. your own interpretation. So, you know, I'm initiating to the game. Okay. I had already initiated to Paolo, but I started as a pagan. So he respects that, that I started as a pagan. And I'm going to tell you something. You think that's new, yeah. but it's not. Exactly. That's how Europe was before Christian invasion. Yeah. That's why we were able to travel to Kemet, Uganda, South Africa, and all these different places and learn from each other. Yeah. Even if you go to Kemet, on certain temple walls, you see certain formulas and they're wrong. It's straight wrong. They're, they're as wrong as E equals MC squared, which is wrong if you didn't know. It doesn't even work. Okay? But the, the thought form of the Kimites was, it doesn't matter. There was no word for argument. I'm not going to argue this with you. You come and you share what it is that you do, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna honor you and your path so much, we're going to carve it on our temple. And it's going to be here thousands and thousands of years from now, even though we think it's wrong. <laughs> So that's okay. what his mindset is like. Uh, I'm a teacher, but I'm also a student. Exactly. So he said, I learned from you. You, you got a good you. person. Yeah. yeah, he says that our Odishas also have Ashe. Right. It's like, you know, a normal Odisha has Ashe. Sometimes you got more than we do. <laughs> I get students sometimes that come through and I, like, we'll do initiation, yeah. but I'll tell them, like, you really don't need this. Where are you located? I'm based in New Jersey, but I work all over. You know, I'm, I'm right at the bridge that we do. But some people just have it. Yes. Here's the thing though, that's been cracked open. It was like that at one point. You would have to initiate in order to initiate your path of learning, which was an excellent thing. But what happened was the culture was raped and robbed and then put in print. So certain things that were once secret, like for instance, you were, you were never supposed to be able to look inside someone's Arisha pot. I can take you right now to Barnes & Noble and show you books that have pictures inside of people's Arisha pot. So, yeah, you know the book we're talking about. The book is titled Santeria. And it's all these pictures of these different pots. You're not supposed to see that. You see, so once stuff got cracked wide open, we have to evolve to something else. So my evolution is this. Okay, you know what? I'm going to teach you that stuff. Because I'm on some new stuff anyway. You really think I call Ogun Ogun? It's not even his name anymore. What is his name? Oh, that's another conversation. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wait for that one, huh? <laughs> they evolved. <laughs> like we and, or, or, Oshun. Oshun. Exactly. Listen, man. She doesn't have a personality. Because that's her energy. <laughs> that's, yeah. That, yeah. It's just energy. And so she needs people. Oshun, Oshun is over and joining. She just needs people to join up. <laughs> However you do it, just join up. Who do you think is having all these little girls having babies? It's teenage pregnancy. Because Yemo Zha is like, listen. The way the recession is, you guys are scared to have children. Plus, you hate each other. You call each other the opposite sex. You're opponents. If I wait for you, there'll be no babies born. Somebody's got to keep the numbers up. 
So I'm gonna deal with these 16, 17 year old girls and these Shango young men. You see? So things evolve and it's our, our human thought that introduces this flesh judgment that judges and say, oh, Shun wouldn't do that. Oh, Shun is righteous. By who? Your religious standards? You see what I'm saying? Like, even so, Oshun has avatar, but she's like, I'm fierce prostitute. River, but I'm a warrior and I'm a source of something. She's a prostitute. How do you think like, her dress turned yellow? Because she used to cry every day. Yeah, the whore. Come from, coming from the word Horus. Heru. Okay, bitch. Again, queen of the dog star. Son of a bitch was a pagan term. That's how the Romans, they would identify people. If you were um, someone, and pagan just means someone who, in the, from the country. If you practice a different religion, they would identify you as a priestess of the bitch or a son of the bitch. And this meant that you dealt with that Osirian energy or what we call Sirius B, Sirius A star system. Sirius, where you get Sirius radio, it's got the image of the dog as the logo. Sirius is from Osiris, where you get the word Irish, the I, where you get the land Ireland, Irish. This all comes from Osiris and the term bitch. And it's most curses that you think of curses at your temple words, that's why they tell you don't say them, because they empower you. Okay, and we, there's a whole list of them. Whoa, because it seems like right something else. Right <laughs> Please, no one bring any of the words up. These energies say, oh, they're all different. But if you look at the Congo and the Mbungles, mm -hmm. the Orishas, like Mama Chola Wenge and Oshun. It's the same thing. Even though we give the respect of the tradition of property differently, but because they mix each other. Because they manifest each other exactly. as something different. Exactly. Here in this moment, most of you can't even remember my first name, first of all. I know I introduced myself when I sat down. So in this moment, I'm just the guy who was talking about Orisha stuff. But in the next moment, I'm somebody's father. In another moment, I'm somebody's grandson. You know, or the guy who almost came late for his uh, workshop. You see? So it's the same energy, but it represents itself in different times, in different people, in different ways. And if you learn all the representations, you get a better grasp on the energy, and then you're able to approach the energy from a peer perspective. That's your goal in this life, not to serve an Orisha. Anybody tells you that, just smile and say, okay, be courteous. But they don't know what the heck they're talking about. Your goal is to serve the Ori. That's the higher self. Yeah, that's you as Olodumare. And that Ori has a mission to ask a question. Oludumari sat back and said, I wonder. And then Lucifer said, I'll make it happen. I'll find out and be better than you, but I'm going to get the answer. And then Oludumari said, okay, cool, but you know what? I want to make you fall to the earth and get herpes and everything else that they get down in that disgusting place. You're going to get herpes and gonorrhea and parking tickets. You're going to get locked up for nothing, domestic abuse, whatever is down there. And Lucifer says, all right, but it's worth it to get the answer. So that's us, going through the crap to get the answer. Mushrooms come from crap, okay? So anything that is worth understanding has to come from fermentation. That's why society is so horrible, what you were talking about earlier, the war. Because out of that fermentation and rot comes fungus for a new life. You said that we work to get the understanding. Aren't we actually, and even though I don't know the answer, but we're born with that understanding? It's just a matter of trying to remember. No. No. You're not you're not born knowing the question, knowing the answer to, to the. And I use the word the on purpose. The means God. You're not born knowing the answer to God's question. Because God is not all knowing. Ask Olu Dumari what it feels like to get punched in the face. Why? He doesn't have a face. Exactly, Chris. So he puts us in the human body to answer the question. Bow! Oh! Okay, um, it stings. So we go back and we say, now when they pray to you, because they were hurt from this, now you have an empathetic link because you didn't know what it felt like, so you had no understanding of it. Now, what we come with the understanding is our, is our past lives, okay? That's what we come in the world with, babies coming. That's why when they come in, they look so miserable. No baby looks happy when it's born. I see my, my daughter come right out the womb, and she did this, she put a V up, and then she, 
crazy trauma, like going from this. It's not they're like I'm here again. Place. That's what they're saying again. Oh my god! Yeah. I just can't. I thought I did it right last time. Now they do this again. Another 80 years of this. That's why they're miserable when they come back. Okay, so that is the aspect you're going to pull down. No, we ran over our time. We thank you for your listening support and urge you to become an active participating member of the A New Order. Please be sure to follow our Ustream broadcast, which can be found at ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash enlightenment hyphen and hyphen transformation. That is U-S-T-R-E-A-M dot TV forward slash channel forward slash E-N-L-I-G-H-T-E-N-M-E-N-T hyphen A-N-D hyphen T-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N. Also, please be sure to sign up for the A New Newsletter, which can be found by going to anewnation.org. That is A-N-U-N-A-T-I-O-N dot org. If you'd like to become a sponsor or an on-air guest, on this or any of our other broadcasts, please be sure to contact us at questions at a new nation dot org. That is the word questions at a new nation dot org. Thank you for your continued support and be well.